So it has been a little while since the second Kerbal Space Program 2 patch, and I'm sure you're all keen to hear when the next one will be. Well, the developers have been hard at work on the game for the past month or so, and Nate Simpson has been posting developer updates on the Kerbal Space Program forums. I thought I'd summarise his posts into a neat little video for you all, so you can kind of get a sense for what's being worked on, and what we can expect from patch number three. I'll use relevant pictures and videos from the update posts when it's helpful, but otherwise I'll just stick some random gameplay in the background. I'm not sure what it is, so I won't be addressing anything that happens, so there's your warning. And I guess I should clarify that I'm not saying all of this is true or false, I'm just reporting on what the official channels are saying, though I don't think any of the developer posts are being made in bad faith or perpetuating false information. Anyway, at the end of April, Nate provided a status update that mentioned that the developers are currently gathering feedback and data from the latest patch, and working on stability, performance, thermal issues, and new features. He expressed gratitude for the community's patience and assured players that their feedback is being collected and reviewed. Nate then stated that there will be a decrease in the frequency of updates for Kerbal Space Program 2 in order to allocate more time for improving the game. He acknowledged the desire for immediate perfection, but emphasised the need for long-term investment and balancing between improving the current early access experience and working on long-term goals. The exact cadence for future updates is still being determined. In addition to this, Nate added that an improvement in the planet shine system was being worked on, with reflected light from planets and moons becoming more apparent in space and on the night side of celestial bodies, thus concluding that update. Now, I think a lot of people immediately saw some red flags at the announcement of decreased frequency of updates, as this was pretty much immediately addressed in another post on the 5th of May, in which Nate addressed concerns raised by the community about the decrease in update cadence. He reassured players that the team is fully funded, properly staffed, and focused on delivering the full vision of Kerbal Space Program 2. He reiterated that the update cadence change aims to balance the desire for frequent updates with the desire of delivering the Kerbal Space Program 2 that we all want, expressing understanding for the waiting period, and emphasising that each update will contain more improvements due to the lower frequency. Continuing with the theme of Kerbal Space Program 2 in the long term, Nate mentioned that the long-term nature of the project and the commitment to developing all of the promised features outlined in the roadmap during Early Access, and that he and Intercept Games will continue to provide weekly updates on the forums to give players a taste of the progress being made. Now, in terms of things to show, this update post showcased rescalable UI elements, which are highly anticipated improvements, especially for people like me who play at 4K. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that this was missing from the original release, but I am super excited to see this finally being implemented. The following week, another update was posted, in which Nate expressed gratitude to Kerbal Space Program's patient and supportive community. As the team continues to work on addressing bugs, stability issues, performance improvements, and new features for the science update in Kerbal Space Program 2, the team acknowledged the frustrations experienced by players and emphasised their dedication to eradicating the bugs and delivering the game that we all want. The upcoming version 0.1.3.0 update was mentioned, with its release expected in June, so this month. <laughs> the team is confident in the progress being made so far, including the resolution of some significant bugs. Nate also showcased new radial science collection parts, designed to provide meaningful payloads for research missions. Now, this is something I am super excited for. I was surprised by just how flat landings felt when I couldn't actually do anything aside from plant a flag, so this is really cool to see showcased. Let's now play a game of wild speculation. Let me know how right or wrong you think I am in the comments down below, and also like the video while you're down there, thank you. <laughs> but this thing looks like a single unit piece with a magnetometer boom, maybe a couple of mystery goo bays, communications equipment, cameras maybe? <laughs> Here's some more beefy stuff. I think this is clearly taking some inspiration from the James Webb Space Telescope, and that looks like the classic mystery goo, and wait, what are all of these things attached to? Could this be the laboratory for Kerbal Space Program 2? The science parts all appear to pop out behind doors, and I wonder if these will always be the same, or if the player can choose what science parts are inside the bays. I'm gonna guess it's the former. That telescope looks pretty fundamentally implemented, but who knows? 
On the 19th of May, Nate once again stated that the next update for Kerbal Space Program 2 is planned to be released in June, with an exact target date to be announced later on. He expressed optimism about the progress being made in bug fixes, stability, performance and gameplay improvements. Further to this, Nate highlighted the addition of grid fins, designed by Chris Adderley, or Natea for you old school KSP modders, and brought to life by Alexander Martin. The team also mentioned the overhaul of the solar lens flare occlusion system by tech artist John Zioletti, resulting in improved polish and performance. The new system ensures that the sun's lens flare behaves correctly when passing behind objects and through various elements like visors, trusses, parachutes and windows. Now, before we continue this video, I'm going to address something that you might have cottoned onto, and that is that these updates have been a little bit vague about what is being patched and actively fixed, and the showcasing of new parts, while still very basic things like trajectories changing when leaving Sphere of Influence is still not being fixed, shows a peculiar prioritization. The comment section underneath these update posts slowly began to turn on Nate due to these aforementioned things, and so the next developer update was a long one and aimed to address these concerns. On the 26th of May, Nate posted that the KSP2 team had acknowledged the concerns and frustrations expressed by the community regarding the lack of progress updates and transparency. He explained that their approach had been to withhold information until they are certain about the features or bug fixes in order to avoid creating false expectations. However, he now recognised the need for increased transparency and is exploring ways to provide better visibility into the progress and status of the game's development. Nate then shared a clear list of some of the major issues that the team is currently working on, categorised based on their impact on gameplay. These include orbit instability, trajectory changes when crossing sphere of influence boundaries, aerodynamic drag spikes with certain inline parts, issues with decoupling events, save file inflation, frame rate lag, reducing the big frame rate lag when opening the parts manager, the general wobbliness of rockets, and improving the post liftoff frame rate lag immediately above the launch pad. Despite the focus of this update being on bug fixing, Nate also mentioned that the upcoming update in June will include new content in the form of new parts, including docking ports and orbital engines. He provided a video showcasing the new engines in action, but mentioned that the inclusion of grid fins might not be possible in this update due to the ongoing engineering work. Here's the tuba engine in action. The tuba has, I think most obviously, an extending engine bell. Real rockets often use these in their second stage engines in order to make the engine as compact as possible when not in use. In rocketry, the bigger the bell, the more efficient in a vacuum. Now, I am massively oversimplifying there, of course. <laughs> the difference between the Raptor and Vacuum Raptor engines is a good example of this. The tuba also has individually swiveling mini nozzles for gimbal. Here it is being used on a lander, which likely means that the engine bell can be retracted once extended for use on landers. I would imagine that this would actively reduce the engine's ISP in-game, so we can have lots of fun trying to retract it as late as possible before touchdown. Anyway, the last developer update I'm going to cover in this video was made on the 2nd of June, and in this post, Nate provided an update on the bug fixes the developers have been working on again. While there hadn't been significant progress on all the issues listed in the previous update, he highlighted a few bugs that saw some improvement. One notable bug mentioned is related to trajectories changing when vehicles cross sphere of influence boundaries. He explained that they have identified some inconsistencies in the simulation code and are assessing the impact and scope of work required to correct them. Another bug addressed was the issue of certain inline parts causing aerodynamic drag numbers to spike. The devs found that the problem was related to drag occlusion, where parts positioned behind other parts were not properly shielded from airflow, leading to unintended drag and stability issues. This problem has now been fixed, although it has resulted in some vehicles feeling faster than they did before. Not a bad thing in my opinion. <laughs> the devs are also currently testing the fix, and it looks promising for the upcoming update, which is still sometime this month. Nate also discussed progress on bug reporting and community feedback. He mentioned changes being made to the suggestions and development subforum to improve communication and prioritise issues. This includes creating a new bug hunter member role on the forums, reformatting threads for upvoting and downvoting bug reports, adding tags and prefixes, and setting up a system to combine duplicate issues. They hope that this new structure will allow players to surface the most pressing issues and provide additional context to the developers. Finally, Nate shared details and blueprint style graphics of the three new Deep Space Methalox engines that will be introduced in the upcoming update. These engines offer new capabilities that will be valuable, especially when players are progressing through the research and development system and nuclear thermal engines are not yet available. 
They are the tuba, trumpet, and cornet, and all seem to share that retractable and extendable engine bell for maximum efficiency in deep space, with the cornet and trumpet having engine gimbal for the main engine, while the tuba is a fixed engine bell with four vernier engines to provide the gimbal. So there you have it, that is the current state of what the future of Kerbal Space Program 2 looks like. I've linked all of the developer updates I talked about in the description if you want to read them yourself. What are my thoughts? Well, I'm remaining cautiously optimistic. For me, the biggest things that keep me from playing KSP2 right Right now are docking and staging bugs, wobbly rockets, <laughs> and a lack of things to do on the surface of planets, all of which seem to be actively being worked on. Reading between the lines, it doesn't sound like we can expect science part in the next update, unfortunately, but I will happily embrace any patch that fixes trajectories changing when crossing sphere of influence boundaries. I'm also glad that the devs are choosing to acknowledge and address criticisms made towards them, rather than ignoring them, which in my opinion is a very good sign. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. And of course, I already said this, but if you did enjoy the video, then give it a little like. It really helps me keep above water in the algorithm and all that stuff. There are some names on screen there, my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members. It's their financial contributions to my channel that keeps me... That keep, keeps me... I run out of... I've obviously got my limit when it comes to talking, aren't I? That helps me keep the lights on around here, and uh, there's two videos from my channel that you should think you'll like. Hopefully they're good picks. Almost a flawless take, wasn't it? Uh, thank you for watching the video, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.